Well, I think we can safely say that things are getting serious now, so let's take a look at the data for May. So this is the Give Energy monthly report that I generated using the web portal, and you can see that we generated a total of 753 kilowatt hours for May, and we consumed uh, 452. So that's a generation to consumption ratio of about 1.66. Uh, if you've seen my um, previous video about uh, the different tariff choices, uh, you'll see that uh, that actually was the perfect uh, amount of generation to consumption for switching over to intelligent flux. So that's what I did uh, for May. And if you want more details, go and watch that video. I'll link it up in the corner. Um, but yeah, that turned out to be a really good uh, decision for us. Um, you can see down here that uh, we charged the battery a total of 357 kilowatt hours and discharged 336. So that's basically Octopus controlling the battery, charging it up uh, either overnight or during the day when there's excess solar and then uh, exporting that during the peak uh, 4 till 7 p.m. Uh, peak period where we have uh, exceptionally high export rates. Um, so that's uh, worked out really well for us. Um, so if I continue to scroll up, you can see the uh, the energy flow diagram here. Um, you know, basically a, a huge chunk now of our um, consumption is coming from uh, the solar. Um, but uh, yeah, we're still actually drawing quite a bit from the grid because of this um, uh, this uh, intelligent flux tariff that we're on. Uh, you actually tend to draw mostly from the grid for all of your usage, really. And the battery is mostly just used for um, pulling. Uh, energy from the grid and then exporting it back to the grid. So uh, charging it up uh, cheaper and uh, exporting it more expensive. Um, and that gives you um, a nice little um, earnings, which I'll show you in a bit. Uh, now, one thing I did want to show you is that um, obviously now we're um, starting to get some decent generation. We're creeping up a bit and our best generation day was um, 37.8 kilowatt hours uh, for May. And um, I'm going to show you something that I don't usually show you because um, I thought it was uh, it would be, it's about time to show you and I thought it was interesting. So this is the profile of our generation during that uh, peak day uh, on the 19th of May. Um, and you can see, um, you know, we start quite early in the morning, about half past five. It uh, slowly ticks up and then suddenly shoots up um, at around about eight o'clock. You get this weird little bump over the middle of the day. Um, and then it sort of drops off a cliff again before uh, just gradually ticking away into the evening. Now, um, Kat and I call this uh, a fondant fancy day um, because we think it looks a little bit like a, um, a slice through a, one of the fondant fancy cakes you can get because uh, it's got this steep side, a little bump at the top and then another steep side on the other side. So uh, yeah, it's very symmetrical because we've got this east-west split. Um, and actually, if I show you the, um, the individual strings, that's quite interesting too. If you go to the My Inverter tab on your Give Energy web portal, you can bring up the solar PV data for each individual string uh, that goes into the inverter. So because we've got an east-west split that are essentially identical and we're extremely east-west, like absolutely perfectly aligned east-west, we've got almost exactly the same profile in mirror image for the two strings and they cross over right in the middle of the day. So bang on one o'clock, which is um, the uh, when when the sun is at its highest in the in the UK right now because we're in British summertime at the moment. So 1 p.m. is actually uh, effectively midday. And uh, yeah, you can see that, uh, you know, this is the east array, which peaks at something about what's that 25 past 10. And then the west array peaks somewhere around uh, four o'clock, something like that. And then, you know, they just drop off a cliff either side. Um, there are actually a little bit of, um, we're missing a small amount of generation in, in this sort of chunk here and in this sort of chunk uh, just here because we've got trees that shade shade the um, the arrays first thing in the morning and, and last thing in the evening. That doesn't really make much of a difference to the, the total generation, maybe a kilowatt hour or two each day in the height of summer. Um, most of the time it doesn't really matter that much. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was uh, quite interesting, um, the pattern that we get. So how does 753 kilowatt hours generated in May compare to last year? Well, last year was exceptionally good, um, 891 kilowatt hours uh, last year. For some reason, it was just ridiculously good. We've not managed to um, meet that sort of level uh, this year, um, but uh, it's basically bang on the uh, expected based on the PVGIS date um, estimates, which is this uh, blue shaded area here. You can see it's only just slightly above that midline, which is um, what we would normally expect to generate in a typical May. So um, that's not bad. I'm, I'm still pretty pleased with that. In fact, this year has been remarkably close to the uh, PVGIS uh, estimate. You can see each of the months up until May have, have all been extremely close to that, uh, that estimated uh, median generation. So yeah, I'm, more, I'm pretty pleased with that. And um, let's see how June uh, pans out for us.
And of course, we didn't uh, use anywhere near all of that generation. We only used 452.7 kilowatt hours uh, for May. Um, it's pretty standard uh, baseline um, level of uh, 200 and 39 and a half kilowatt hours, very similar to some of the previous months. Um, the EV, actually quite similar to last month, uh, 79 uh, kilowatt hours. The uh, air-to-air um, heating system is essentially turned off now, so there's um, basically nothing. 6.26 uh, kilowatt hours, a lot of that is actually just the standby mode. I've, I've um, now switched them off uh, at the uh, at the smart plug, so they're they're not really drawing any um, standby power at the moment. If we need the um, the air to air for cooling, I'll turn them on and leave them on for probably an hour or two before we actually need them, just to make sure that you know all of the uh, lubricants are heated up properly and all that stuff that you have to do with um, with these heat pumps. Uh, but uh, that's uh, you know something to be. Um, worried about later when it gets hot. Um, you can see our hot water, we used 122.8 kilowatt hours. That's way down uh, on last month, um, not dissimilar to um, uh, March, but in March we were actually away for a, for a few days. So the, I think one of the main reasons we're using um, a lot less hot water uh, now is because the water that goes into the, the cylinder to get heated is actually going in at a higher temperature than it was over the winter. So it needs heating up less, which means therefore we obviously um, need less energy to heat it up to the relevant temperature and the fact that it's a bit warmer now as well means that we actually don't need as much hot water when we're showering and stuff like that so um, those two things combined mean that um, the amount of hot water we use over the summer is significantly lower than the amount of hot water we used in uh, in uh, January for example which is you know um, 50 odd kilowatt hours more than we than we're using at the moment. Um, the uh, towel rails, um, I turned those off as well um, early on in May because um, the towels are drying just fine on their own. And that obviously gives us a total of uh, 452.7 kilowatt hours, which is um, pretty similar to some of the other summer months from last year. Um, I'm showing um, uh, 13 months worth of data now just so that we've got the um, direct comparison with last year's equivalent month. And you can see that we're a little bit lower, about 30 odd kilowatt hours less um, but a lot of that seems to be the EV and um, we used the EV a bit more apparently last May uh, than we did um, this May so there you go that's uh, that's all good I think we're going to be um, staying well below this 500 kilowatt hour line for uh, the rest of the summer and uh, that will help us build up a bit of credit with uh, Intelligent Flux so that's all good. And finally, the financial side of things. So our total bill for the month of May was minus £66. Um, that's fantastic. That's uh, the, the first solid negative bill. Uh, last month we had um, minus £11, but we've uh, absolutely smashed that. It's nowhere near what we earned last month, uh, last uh, May though, which was £102.49. Um, but that was mostly due to the exceptionally high um, levels of generation that we had last May, as I showed in the uh, in the generation chart. Um, but that's all good because um, we still saved ourselves basically two hundred pounds compared to what we would have um, spent um, if we didn't have all of the you know the solar and the um, the heating and all that other stuff. Uh, it would have cost us one hundred and thirty three pounds, uh, you know, using gas and um, petrol for the EV. Um, so combined, the sixty six pounds. Um, and the £133 that it would have cost us gives us a, a grand total savings of um, best part of £200. So yeah, once again, pretty pleased with that. That's um, one of the higher uh, uh, savings compared to um, the last uh, few months over the winter. Uh, it's nowhere near as good as uh, last May, where we saved £285. Um, but let's see how we how we get on in, in June. Um, the generation is going to be a little bit higher, so uh, hopefully with being on Intelligent Flux, that should give us a nice um, extra boost of earnings. Um, but yeah, I will report back in, uh, well, at the start of July with the data for June. So yeah, meet me back here in a month. So that's all our solar stats for the month of May. Hope you found that useful. Uh, so one thing I'd like to mention briefly before I go. Um, you may have noticed this very strange looking football in the uh, corner of our office here underneath our air-to-air uh, -air unit. Um, so the story behind that has actually finally uh, been revealed. Um, it's this... Uh, has been in, in my office for months and months now, um, having been gifted to me by Matt Parker, who goes by the name of Stand Up Maths on YouTube. Um, so yeah, he's finally released the video that we recorded um, about this particular ball. Uh, if you're interested in finding out the story behind it, please go and check out his video. I'll link it up in the uh, in the corner. But yeah, it was a lot of fun recording that. Um, if, uh, if you go and watch that, you'll find out a little bit about what I actually do for my day job. Um, I've kept it reasonably quiet up until now, but kind of the cat's out of the bag now. So uh, yeah, go check that out if you're interested. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.